Ladies and gentlemen, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to the World Championship Series Grand Finals Day One. How you doing, BlizzCon? Yeah. Oh yeah. An extraordinary <laughs> scream from the crowd lets us know that we're all in good shape. I'm Day Nine, joined by Jeffrey in control Robinson, Dario Tialo Wunsch, and Dan, basically tasteless, but actually Artosa Stemkowski, the three smartest men in the history of StarCraft II. How excited are you to take? I'm surprised you got all of that in one take. That is absolutely <laughs> correct. Yeah. He is basically tasteless, and we are the smartest people in all of StarCraft. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I cannot wait to get started. We've been, we've been preparing for this moment for what feels like a millennium, but it's actually just been a week. <laughs> I mean, the thing that's really exciting is that there's been all these people playing Legacy of the Void. There's a whole bunch of buzz about new build orders, new units. But this tournament, Heart of the Swarm, the last Heart of the Swarm tournament, and all these players have been training so, so damn hard. It's absolutely incredible because we don't only have some of the best players here, but actually the best players of probably Heart of the Swarm history. Because after this, there's no more Heart of the Swarm tournaments, so nobody can actually practice more than ah. these guys ever. <laughs> wow. Think about that logically. <laughs> Dario is an expert on this sort of thing. So yeah, and I mean, to back that up, we have last year's world champion, the world champion from the year before that, the one from the year before that, he got eliminated the round before that. So, I mean, this is actually like all the champions, GSL, SSL, WCS, yeah. we have the absolute best players all here, and the matches are so stupid good. I yeah. just, oh my god, <laughs> do not turn off this stream. Now, for any of you who are just tuning into WCS for the first time ever and might not be knowing what we're talking about, don't worry. Let's find out what the structure of WCS has been and what we're looking forward to today. The World Championship Series, or WCS, is the heart of competitive StarCraft II. The best players in the world compete in multi-season competition to win their share of $1.6 million in prize money, as well as WCS points. The points are the backbone of the WCS that represent each player's performance throughout the year. This leads into the Global Finals, the World Championship of StarCraft II. The WCS Premier League hosts the best players living outside of Korea. The first step to becoming a Premier League player is competing in a regional qualifier. There are six regions through which players can compete for the opportunity to play. The very best from each region will then qualify for Challenger, the next stage of competition. Once in Challenger, players must compete in a single match against players who represented their region in the previous season. The best 32 players from those six regions will then travel to compete in the Premier League, fighting to be a WCS champion and increasing their chance to play at the Global Finals. Korea also offers opportunities to all players to compete in the WCS system through two open individual leagues, the GSL and Star League. Players may simultaneously compete in both leagues, offering opportunities to display their skills in the most competitive region. In combination with the official leagues, the WCS, GSL and Star League, players can also travel and compete in global events. Independent StarCraft II tournaments hosted by partnered organizations. Each global event in the circuit awards additional points, making them an important milestone in achieving a spot at the Global Finals. The Global Finals will take place at BlizzCon in Anaheim, California. The top 16 players with the most points will compete to find out who is the world champion of StarCraft II. And now with only eight players remaining, it's a single elimination bracket, which honestly adds a whole new dimension of tension. You don't get to mess up. It's all down to that single best of five. Yeah, there's nowhere else to go. And there's nowhere else to go in even all of Heart of the Swarm. This is you sending off the game. But I really like the format in the sense that coming into the round of 16, the players had a long time to prepare for their opponent. We played the round of 16 last weekend, so they've now had five days to prepare for this match as well. And these players thrive in that environment. Most of these guys come from that Korean scene. Actually, all of them come from that Korean scene where <laughs> that's a lot of their matches. They don't play a, a you know a 32-man tournament in one day. They prepare for each match. And the entire tournament has been that way too. Yeah. And you can be sure that it's not just a single player preparing for it, but the structure of teams in Korea is so advanced that they're, they're going to have a 
bunch of coaches just going over every replay, over every VOD of their opponents and going to try to just find out the best strategy possible to yeah. beat their opponents. Yeah, every single player that's left here has a coach that's here with them as well. I'm sure that they have teammates back at home in Korea actually practicing these matches out, watching the VODs of their yeah. opponents. We are going to see the most prepared matches that you can ever find in StarCraft And kind of on that note, I want to give a special nod to SKT1 in particular, because it feels God, like yeah. of the prepared players yes. and of the prepared teams, <laughs> they are even markedly ahead of the rest. Like, they seem like a juggernaut yeah. of talent, and mm -hmm. innovation is, is kind of the, the player that everyone's expecting to win, even. Yeah, and I mean, the, the, the whole goal behind so much preparation is to eliminate all the distractions that can possibly creep into your head when you're at this... Well, really the largest event yeah. period for StarCraft II, especially with this much weight. We've said the last Heart of the Swarm tournament a million times. The prize pool, another major distraction in this event. The fact that there are $250,000 on the line. And in every single game, if you get that loss, that little, that little word sneaks into your head. Oh. Ooh, how much am I going to lose if I keep messing up? No, maybe I should do something more conservative. Maybe let me, let me not do the build order I was practicing. Let me try to be safe. Like, what do you guys think? Well, I mean, I, I like the word distractions. I think that's a yeah. really good one because it describes everything you said. But even just like maybe you're not down 0-1, but your opponent kind of spooks you out a little bit. I mean, we were talking about Hero versus Classic, where Classic is kind of on the totem pole, one of the, I don't know, lesser players is what you would say, but he has individually beaten Hero several times, including at last year's BlizzCon. And all of a sudden, that narrative starts to creep in your head a little bit where it's like, uh, does this guy got my number? But something like this actually forges like the best champion that you sure. should possibly get, right? Because we see people like Life last year, SOS the year before, that just have nerves of steel. I don't. I think if it was for $10 million for first place, <laughs> these guys would still play at their absolute best. And in fact, I think they even become better under that pressure. Yeah, I mean, that's something that Life always impresses me with, the fact that he's so easy to count out. Or even last year, MMA, so easy to count out. Those are the two people that we see wind up in the fight. Are you counting Life out against Innovation? No, I actually, I'm, I'm doing really You're poorly in the caster predictions, so I'm going to vote for Life. All right. A lot of people are voting for Innovation. I have to root for Life because I really need to catch up there. Yeah, yeah no, we aren't. We're yeah. all, we're all yeah. voting for yeah. Innovation yeah. there. <laughs> it's like, what are you You clear? go, Sean. I You're believe so in brave. myself. <laughs> Even the creative guys pick an innovation. Like, <laughs> now, coming up today, we're going to be doing every single round of eight match. Quarterfinals back to back to back. And opening week last week gave a lot of time to prepare. But after you win that match yeah. today, you just get to think about what you want to do on the final championship that will occur on Saturday. I actually, I, I really like that. Like, the most time prepared for round of 16, round of eight, you have a little bit, you have five days. If you get past the round of eight, you have one day. And then if you get past the round of four, you have no time at all, actually. It's like a couple <laughs> hours. <laughs> and that's what makes it such a beautiful culmination. That yeah. In that final match, we have all three races represented here at the tournament. You're not really sure who you're going to be up against or what race you're going to be up against, but you know you have to give it your all. It's the last, last tournament. I mean, and $100,000 sitting there on the line, the fact that you become the world champion, that's really a way to make a name. And we have several players left in this tournament that just aren't as big a names. People yeah. like Hydra, people like Rogue, even Classic keeps getting undercounted despite his multiple championships. So whoever wins this, they become that same type of status that we look at with Life and SOS. And the crazy thing is you're only three games away from actually taking the title. Yeah. So it's incredibly, <laughs> it's incredibly close because like yeah. everybody here is grasping on the title and, and on the money as well. And they have to not think about it, they have to not think about all this stuff, they have to not think about the fact that there's this massive audience here. Hello guys. Woo! They have to just try to block you out and just play the game. The best part about this final eight, as we've said before, it couldn't be a better lineup. It's all the most storied players. We got a few underdogs in there. And honestly, some of the most surprising results from opening weekend, yes. the round of 16. Let's take a look at what happened last weekend.
2015 World Championship Series Global Finals. As we get into our first game here in this best of five, every single series counts, every single map counts. There is no double elimination. This is all single. One of these guys will already be going home. This is really well set up. He drew out the entire position, and the Protoss has very hard time of being able to transition between these locations. He gets it. There's no room for fantasy to move around here, and Hero is ripping it apart. GG, he takes the series three to one, and he advances to the round of eight here at the Global Finals. Yeah, it's going to be one hell of a PVZ. Classic definitely a very good record in the past against Buell. Classic continues blinding, to push forward. The aggressive club. blink, blinding cloud right on top of all those stalkers as they're fumbled. A second funnel is gonna hit. It's 190 supply against 115. Pure, the successful Zerg, maybe the most successful Zerg in 2015. He's got a tap out over here. GG. That's right, our Intel Extreme Masters world champion here of the most recent season goes up against Innovation. You might get the Mothership Core. Oh, he forces the photo of a charge in the main. The Mothership Core is going to oh die. Oh my well. god. What is going on here? Of getting destroyed here, and it just goes down towards the natural. There you go, GG Innovation takes it 3 0. But all the foreign hopes ride on that man's shoulders and on Lil Bo. The full work is 3 2 1, and that is GG Life continues to completely destroy Lil Bo here. The Roach is coming out, it's only centuries left for Little Bo. He has nothing left here, and with that, that is GG. And Life will take the series 3 to 0. Paul hasn't been playing against Protoss like Rain in forever, and I think just because of that, I'm already leaning towards Rain. Paul pushes in towards that crucial fifth base of Rain. He needs this to survive, he needs this. Phenomenal decision making from Rain in the face of danger to get aggressive without any colossi and secure victory. GG Rain advances. I actually just couldn't be more excited for a PvP again. No, it's going to be very, very fun. So is trying to make oh, it work. The stalker is looking the right side. There's two colossi versus two. He's on the third base. Warpers are continuing to reinforce. Is it against you know the free flight at the end? GG SOS eliminates parting and advances on to the round of eight. One of the best matchups here in StarCraft 2 as Dream and Hydra face off against one another. Can the Banelings do anything? They were being focused down by the units in that bunker. They haven't been able to get through the SCVs just yet, but they actually blow up on the few of them. 14 workers have already gone down. He can't repair it. He's surrounded by Zerglings. This is great pressure here. GG! Hydra is able to take the series. He takes it 3 to 2. The next game coming up is going to be Maru versus Rogue. Oh my goodness, he breaks the bunker down and he just runs right in. Maru caught in the worst humanly possible position. Real yeah. point down a couple. GG, yes. Rogue, three O's, Maru. We will crown the world champion of 2015. We'll see you at BlizzCon. Now, of course, every tournament has some upsets, but the way in which those panned out in the round of 16 kind of surprised me. I mean, Rogue 3 0 Morrow, the last one that we just saw there, still surprised me. I would still vote for Morrow if I could. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Rogue even winning is surprising, but the fact that he 3 0 him in very dominant fashion, yeah. like we saw that last game highlight there, it was like, yeah, 30,000 roaches just kind of ran him over, and it was not close. It was very surprising. I mean, innovation, I mean, a lot of people expected him to be advancing. A lot of people think he's the favorite for the tournament. Crushed 3-0 life. I, I don't even know how good his form is. He just won 3-0 so fast. There's like so much unknown going into the round of eight. Yeah, and, and I mean, even with Classic against Biel, that was like a big surprise as yeah. well, right? 3-0, Biel has been so good lately. Really and of course, the top eight, champion after champion, hero, classic, innovation, life, Rain, SOS, Rogue, and Hydra. Dario, we can't emphasize what you said enough. This is probably the best possible lineup when you look back at the history of Heart of the Swarm. It is absolutely incredible. And one thing I'm actually very happy about is that we still have one WCS player, even though he's also Korean, yeah. but he's been practicing in America. 
and it shows that even if you live in America and not in Korea, you can make it to the finals. And Hydra, Hydra, that player, um, went second and then first and then round of eight in WCS. I mean, that is very hard to do consistently. And I'm really impressed at the consistency of both Hydra and Rogue. Rogue, who really has not done anything massive, he hasn't gotten a gigantic win, got yeah. to the round of eight every single tournament he played in. And that's, that's what I like, going back to Dan's point earlier, too. Like, that's what BlizzCon is so awesome about. Like, mm -hmm. Rogue could make his name here. He goes into this tournament, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, a consistent Korean player is very good. But if you win BlizzCon, all of a sudden yeah. you become that legend. And, and there's a couple guys like that. I think Classic falls into that category as well, where his results are even better than that. But I feel like for some reason, people just kind of skip over him. <laughs> and then even Hydra, like you said, his storyline, leaving Korea. But then if he could best this field, then it's kind of one of those cool things where it's like, you're actually something special because you left yeah. the best gaming environment on planet Earth and you still won. That would truly be amazing. And I mean, he has Rogue in that first round who you said, Sean, made it to the round of eight. This is the round of eight. Uh-oh. He hasn't been past the round uh -oh. of eight, right? So this is pretty <laughs> wait, tough. Wait, 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 wait. Real Dan, chance here for Hydra. Dan, who do you pick to win that match? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dan, be careful. <laughs> With great power, I, I did great choose Rogue to win that match. Oh, oh my, my God. God. What a tragic end to his journey in the pregame show. <laughs> Cutting news, breaking news even, uh, Rogue is out. We talked about already. some of these stories. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look directly at the brackets that we have here today. These are insane matchups, starting right off with a huge rivalry. Classic versus Hero, Innovation versus Life, two of probably the most famous players in the history of Heart of the Swarm, Rain versus SLS. Of course, SOS, a former champion. Rain getting second in BWC. Yeah. We have Hydra versus Rogue, the two underdog stories at the far bottom of the bracket. What's your favorite matchup looking like? I mean, these are all incredible, but I gotta be honest, I'm gonna be very curious if Daria could disagree with this one. I feel like Innovation Life is the showstopper. I feel like that is the matchup that people look at and go, I hope those are awesome games, because that on paper is the, one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of cool stuff. You've looked at a lot of cool paper. I've seen some cool paper. Well, I'd be a fool to have to disagree with you with that. I mean, this is basically Zerg versus Terran in yeah. its purest form. And it reminds me a little bit, actually, of Flash versus Jadong in Brood War. Yeah, yeah. I like, it. I like yeah, that. That's actually a really good analogy for it. And I mean, the thing is, innovation's been so hot recently. Life got most of his points at the beginning of the year. so. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to go, but Moonglade was talking to Life earlier, and he said, oh, yeah, I've got this. I'm going to beat him for sure. He always does the same thing. No problem. I love Life's confidence. He's, <laughs> he's a little spark plug, that one. I, like I, feel that. Like, I feel like five minutes before every tournament, he goes, wait a minute, they still have Banelings in this game, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, can I build Banelings? I, okay, cool. Yeah, I would love... I Zergling would love the speed is still only 100 gas, it's right? Still, I can still get the speed in the Zergling. Okay, well, I would love the 2014 championship. Huh. No problem. <laughs> but really, that's the thing that I love so much about life as a player is a lot of Zergs focus on playing reactively. They focus on looking mm -hmm. for all the signs of what the opponent's doing first, and then they make a choice. But life is the opposite. He finds that decisive moment where yeah. he goes, oh, he's going to be weak in about two and a half minutes. And I mean, I, I analyzed the 2014 championship so much in every one of those games. It was an all-in, but a different all-in with a different signal. And it's that sort of really just decisiveness yeah. where he's like, I'm going for it. That is so stressful to play against. Even beyond that, Sean, like what I like about life is that when I watch StarCraft, a lot of what really pulls me in and gets me excited is seeing people do things that I could never do in a million years. And I'm a pretty good StarCraft player, but these guys uh -huh. on the stage are another level. And life, I feel like what he does with Zerg is so fun because you're like, oh, I'm, I'm watching a talent. I'm watching mm. something special. Oh, yeah. And it's actually transpired over time. Like, life has remained one of the absolute best Zergs for years now, and he's a young guy. So we're going to get this show underway in just a moment, but it's time to find out how awesome we are. Predictions, oh. Artosis, go. Yes. For, for the whole tournament? For the whole tournament. Match. Who's going to win? <laughs> All right. SOS is going to take down innovation in the finals, I think. Oh. Dario. As much Crowd as I didn't would like it. As much as, like <laughs> as much as I would like to see Life take it because he's by far my favorite player of all time, I think Innovation got it. Jeff. Uh, Dario and I have been agreeing so much. I, I do have to say, I think Innovation's the favorite, and if there was money on the line or something, I'd say Innovation. But my heart, my heart will go on. I think I would love a Hydra Innovation final or something like that. That'd be. I gotta go with CJ Entis Hero. Awesome. I keep counting him out in all the tournaments. Oh. He keeps winning them. It's time to find out if we have any, any correct answers <laughs> at all. Ladies and gentlemen, let's kick off WCS 2015 Grand Finals.